to CBC Kids Wednesday Summer Kids Ministry. Hey, I know you're not here, but I'm so glad I get to talk to you. I'm glad you're watching. You know, it's great to talk to you boys and girls. You know, do you talk to people? Do you talk to people? I certainly hope so. Do you talk to your parents? Maybe grandparents? Maybe a brother or sister? Hmm. Oh, and what about a friend? Oh boy, I hope you're talking to your friends. Because we want to talk to mothers and we want to get to know people. Well, you know, who we should talk to the most is our very, very, very best friend. You might think that's someone you know down the street or at your school. But I'm talking about God. We should talk to God all the time. Well, sometimes we might say, hey, um, we pray to God, thanks for the food. Or, hey, God, please help me. Please help me with this. Or please give me this. But we should pray to God and talk to him. And we should say, hey, thank you, God. Praise you, God. And we should really thank him because he's our creator. Well, anyway, I hope you're praying to God. And I hope you're talking to him. Because he's your best friend. And he's the one we really should be talking to. And worship him. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, welcome to CBC Kids Wednesday Summer Kids. Well, hey, let's worship God right now. and girls and welcome to our teaching time tonight and so tonight as Rozzy talked about at the beginning that's Rozzy the Zazi that was at the beginning talked about talking to others and talking to your friends and your parents and grandparents and uh, brothers sisters different people in your life but we should talk to God talk to God every day talk to him continually and we should make sure that we're really praying and talking to him and not just kind of um, asking for things all the time. And so I want to show you a picture. And so look at this picture and what is the very first thing you think of? Look at this picture. So what is the very first thing you think of when you see this picture? Did you say it at home? I hope you did. So probably what you thought of is 
praying. They are called a, a statuesque type thing of praying hands. And what if I took my hands and I put my hands like this and went like this? What do we think of? What do we think of? Of praying. And we say a lot of times at church when you're actually here or maybe your parents do or Sunday school or different places, you might hear people saying, bow your head, close your eyes, and fold your hands. And, and uh, there's not a lot of that that we really um, have to do. We can pray and, and just sitting alone, but we do that a lot of times at church because it helps us to be quiet, helps us not looking around to really concentrate and think about God. We fold our hands so we keep our hands to ourselves. And it's also a thing that we call reverence or, or being before God, bowing before God. And so uh, this is what we want to do when we pray. But we can pray, like I say, we can pray on our bed, we can pray kneeling on our knees, we can pray sitting at a desk. There's, there, we don't have to be a church, we don't have to be in a certain way uh, to pray. We can talk to God anytime. The Bible says, what we're, we're not going to really look at that verse tonight, but in First Thessalonians it says, pray continually, a very short, ver short verse. And it says, pray continually. And so we're going to talk about prayer and talking about God, uh, praying to God. And the reason I want to talk about this is because, you know, uh, right now it seems like I don't, I hope you don't see a, a whole lot of news and things, but you may hear about some of these things, some of the older kids, but some of you may hear your parents or some of you may be wondering, why aren't we going to church and why are all these different things happening? And sometimes we can get to where we just are like, what's going on? Maybe it's not, maybe none of these things are um, something in your life, but maybe you're like, why does my sister always be mean to me? Or why does this always happen? Why is this happening? And you know, a lot of times we uh, don't go to God in those situations, but we should be going to God for all of these things. Maybe we have someone that we know, maybe we know Jesus and we love Jesus so much, we want our friend to know Jesus, but they don't. And we're concerned about that. We can pray and talk to God. So there's all kinds of ways we can pray and, and talk to him. But tonight I want to look at this. In Matthew chapter 6, we are taught and Jesus taught his disciples about prayer. And a lot of times you may have learned this. Um, a lot of times in Sunday school, Awana, uh, Kids Church, Wednesday nights, um, at, uh, if you go to a Christian school, a lot of times, a lot of churches, uh, if you maybe go to our Awana or I'm watching this uh, on Wednesdays, but go to another church, some churches they pray this every Sunday, and it's called the Lord's Prayer, and it is a great prayer, but it, it's really an example where Jesus, his disciples asked him, hey, God, how do we, uh, Jesus, I should say, hey, Jesus, how do we pray? How do we talk to God? And you may know it by heart, I know it, but I want to read it right from the English Standard Version of the Bible. And a lot of times when we say in church, we say the King James Version, and some people may say something different. But this is right out of the Bible, but you may know it a, a little different, but all the words are, are if a word is a little different, it still says all the same things. And so this is right from the Bible, Matthew chapter 6, and this is where Jesus was preaching. It's called the Sermon on the Mount, and he's talking, and they say to him, and he says to them, when you pray, this is how you should pray. And he teaches the disciples, and he says, and the people, the disciples, and all the people, there's lots of people there that were listening to Jesus, and he says, our Father in heaven, so first we talk to God, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now, uh, where it said debtors there, some, some of you may know that it, where it says, give us this day our daily bread, and lead us not into, I mean, and forgive us our trespasses. So trespasses, debtors, meaning, um, and debts, meaning, our sins is really what that is. So forgive, we forgive those who sinned against us, and Lord, forgive us. And if you see that, it says, and forgive us our sins, and then, or debts, as we have forgiven, and as we have forgiven. So we need to forgive others. And then he goes on, lead us not in temptation. Some of you may pray it and may know it as deliver us from, this says, from evil or from the evil one, meaning uh, Satan or evil, what Satan does and tries to 
uh, get us uh, to tent to sin, so to keep us from that. And so that is the Lord's Prayer, and that is what we call the Lord's Prayer. And when uh, Jesus taught the people to pray, teaching it's for us too, and taught us to pray. But what I want to look at is in John chapter 17. And in John chapter 17, we have a prayer that Jesus prayed. Now this prayer, if we go back a few chapters, we see John 13, where Jesus washed the disciples' feet, and we had the Lord's Supper. And you may remember when we celebrate communion, he had that last supper with, with the disciples. And then he go, it says, and there are several chapters where there's some great teaching from Jesus to his disciples. And now he goes and he, when we read like in Matthew and of him going into the garden, this is him now. And this is where John, remember he takes three disciples, Peter, James, and John go with him and are closer to him. And this is where John, John is recording what Jesus prayed. And this is Jesus' words of Jesus praying. And one of the parts that is really important is he goes through and he prays and he talks to God. And this is right before he's going to go to the cross. And so he knows this, and he, t he prays, and he prays for several things. And we're going to learn more about this, and we're going to go through this a little more, not even, not a lot tonight, but as in the next few weeks, because I want you to know the importance of prayer and praying. And here's one of the things Jesus prays, and he prays these things for the disciples. And, he, and, and really, uh, for all of us, we're going to see that in just a minute, how it's for us too. And he prays for them. He prays, there's really kind of three things that he said he prayed for the disciples. That they would be one as he and the Father were one. And what that is saying is he and the Father, is, is, remember the Trinity and Father, the God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus came as God in the flesh. And so they are one, they are so close, and, and it's, it's hard for us to understand all the Trinity and God the Father, God the Son, but it's Jesus, God the Son, and so, and God the Father. And he says, so as we are one, I want the disciples and then really everyone who believes in Jesus Christ, Jesus saying he wants us to be one. And so a lot of times we don't see that, sadly, in the church and a lot of times there's not a closeness that should be there but he says that's what I pray for my church that's what I pray for the New Testament church that's what I pray for those that believe in me to be one to be close as I and the Father are one and then he prays that God would protect them from the evil one now remember that Lord's Prayer that we talked about in Matthew 6 that and I talked about that a little bit now he prays it and he says that he wants them to be protected and to be kept from the evil one and from those things coming and attacking the his people that believe in him his followers his disciples and then he prayed that they would be made holy by the truth of god's word and he prayed this and he wanted them to continue to learn and to know who god is to know who jesus is by the word of god the word and at that time they had the old testament but then the New Testament will be written, and so that, and God knew that, Jesus knew that, and so he wanted them to be made holy. Remember, holy is without sin. Now, when we put our trust in Jesus, we are made right with God, and we are forgiven for all our sins. But we still sin, don't we? But what he's saying is, he wants us to, and what the Christian life is about is continuing trusting in God, praying, learning, knowing more about him, to be made more holy, to be made more like Christ, like God. And so these are three things that Jesus prayed for his disciples. Now, how is that for us? Well, let's look at this verse. In verse uh, John 17, verse 9, he says, I am praying for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me for they are yours, okay? He says, so what he's saying is, is he's not praying for uh, those who do not know him. That's, the, that's what he means by the world. He's not praying for sinners, lost people who do not know him, who have not believed in him or put their trust in him. And then he says, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. 
and I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. And he goes on, he says, while I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them has lost except the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. And he goes on, and he says, I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. And we said that. That was the second thing. And he says, they, they are not of the world. And he says, just as not, I am not of the world, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. And that's about making them holy in the word of God. See all these verses that are saying that. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they may also be sanctified in truth. So a lot of words, a lot of things, some of those words you may not understand. Sanctified means to be set apart as one who is a follower of Jesus. And then he says, by the word of truth, to be made holy. That's where I was talking that thing about God's word and to be made holy. And he goes on, he says, this is the key part. I do not ask for those only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, in me, and I in you. And so right there he's saying, do you see that? Those that will come after. You know who that is? That means um, people, that means even like, the disciples were there, but Paul wasn't. That wrote a bunch of the New Testament. So that meant Paul. That meant everyone that came after. So uh, all of those in the early, what we call the early church, that started right after Jesus ascended to heaven. Remember, we've talked about that before. And then everyone all the way up to today. He was praying for us. So Jesus prays in John 17, and he prays these things for the world and so you know what when you pray if you say i don't know what to pray well i gave you the example of the lord's prayer you can go with your parents and look at matthew 6 but also here in john 17 so you can pray for that pray for that for the all those who are christians in the church not calvary baptist church when i say the church i mean all the churches that believe in jesus christ as lord and savior believe in the word of god as the true word of god that are following him all those that believe in him and follow him, that we would be one, that people are not one big church and millions are going to it. We still have what's called the local church. They had that in, in Bible times. But that we would be one as, is, as in following Jesus and within our church, that people would love one another. And we, would, we might not all just get along perfectly. You might not have someone that's your, your necessarily your best friend, but that we are one, meaning that we are followers of Christ and we agree and that we follow Jesus and we look to Jesus, we look to God for our direction, for our help, and for our, the one who provides for us. And then that you would pray that God would protect, protect all Christians and people that you know, that protect from the evil one, protect, protect from sin and from Satan's temptation to sin. And that that's a prayer that you could pray. And then you could pray that we would all learn from the truth, from the word of God to grow and to know more of God, know more of Jesus, to become more and more holy each day. Meaning that each day we become more like Christ. We learn more about him and how we should live and how we should act. And we do that through prayer, talking to God, and through reading the Bible and learning from him and things like this, watching and listening and learning. And so tonight what I want you to really hear is about prayer. Matthew 6 is the Lord's Prayer. John 17 is a prayer that Jesus prayed. And it's a very uh, great prayer, important prayer. And just the biggest thing is, are you praying? Are you spending time in prayer? Are you talking to God? Are you spending time with God? Are you spending time uh, really praying and talking to Him? Or I'll be honest, sometimes I can get into a situation where it's just 
what I've always liked to talk about and say like a genie in the bottle and we can just say God oh please give me this oh I know I should have you know done a better job and, and prepared more for something or, or worked harder at this but I didn't and so now I need your help well that's kind of like we weren't diligent in doing the right thing and being obedient in the first place but now I want your help God well sometimes He's, I mean, well, he's always there, but sometimes he'll do what's called discipline us and he'll make it still a difficult situation because we didn't prepare. But he still loves us and he's still there and he's still going to help us through, but we have to deal with those things in life. But what I mean is, are you praying? Are you really spending time and saying, God, I love you. I worship you. I'm thankful for what you've done. And now when I pray, I'm praying for those things, for Lord keep people from the evil one and from that sin and, and keep me from that and protect people and help them. And Lord, help us to be one. Help us, the church to be one, what we call unity and following you. Lord, help us to all grow and to know more of you and to be holy, to be more like Christ. Lord, I pray these things for the people I know and the Christians that are love you and serve you. That's what we can be praying instead of, hey, give me, give me, give me. And so boys and girls, you know, uh, I teach these things a lot of times. I, I've learned a lot of different things and stuff, but I'm still growing and need to become more like Christ. And so this is something for me as well. I hope we will all take this to be challenged to pray and to pray more and to pray and talk to God each and every day, not just a little, not just for our food, but really pray and pray for these things as Jesus prayed for us. And one last thing is to know that Jesus prayed for us. He's still praying for us. Those that are followers of him, he wants us to know him more. And so he cares about us. All right. Hey, you know what? We're going to close and let's close by what we've just talked all about. Take in and we can fold our hands because it reminds us of prayer and bow our heads and close our eyes. I'm going to pray as we're closing here. Let's pray. God, thank you for loving us. God, thank you for sending your son Jesus, and Jesus being that holy example of who God is, showing us who God is, and living in the flesh, God in the flesh on earth. And we see, as he taught us the Lord's Prayer, how to, how to pray, that's an example of praying. But then also in John 17, that he prayed for us, and he prayed these things for us, Lord, to be, um, uh, to be one to be kept and protected from the evil one, to uh, learn to become more and more holy through the word of truth, the Bible. And Lord, help us to remember these things and that Jesus prayed for us and we then can go forth and pray for others and pray these things as we pray each day. Lord, help us to be challenged, to be encouraged, to pray and to pray more because this world needs more prayer and needs people that know you praying and praying for great things to happen. And so we pray for these things. We thank you. And I pray for the boys and girls right now, those three things. To be one, uh, that we would all be close, and that uh, once now we're distanced and not together, but we can still be close as in following you and, and unity in that, that you would protect them, keep them from the evil and the sin of the world, keep them from those temptations. And Lord, when they're tempted, keep them from uh, giving in to that, and then also, Lord, to continue to grow in you and to become more holy, more like Christ. So we thank you for this, and we thank you and love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, boys and girls, thanks for watching, and hopefully parents are watching with them. With the kids, you can help hopefully uh, explain some of this to them about prayer. And boys and girls, I hope you will be take that challenge, be encouraged to pray and to spend time with God. Okay, I hope I can, you will watch again on Sunday for our online kids' church, and until next time, I'll see you later.